Hello, greetings. Uh, so in this video, I want to take a look at our example problem from this week in which we look at adding a uh, or performing a sensitivity analysis and adding a controller to our absorption column from uh, last week. And so just to give you an idea of what I have going on is so this is our um, column from last week. So we have some inlet solvent stream. So it's 200 kilomoles per hour of pure water We at 20 degrees C and 1.04 bars. The gas that I need to treat, uh, so it's 30 degrees C and 1.04 bars, a flow rate of 100 kilomoles per hour, uh, 3.2 mole percent acetone in the balance air. Okay, and all of that is is over here in uh, the problem statement. And then the column, right? I have an operating pressure of 1.03 bars uh, in six stages. Okay, and so the key is if if I run this and I look at my treated gas. Uh, my treated gas is 1.425 mole percent acetone. Um, now the problem statement is such that, okay, so you know, as this process currently stands, or as my flow sheet with these you know input variables you know currently stands, my outlet acetone concentration is 1.42 mole percent. My specification is is that I need to get the concentration to be less than 0.3 mole percent. Right, so I need the exit concentration to be less than 0.3 mole percent or 0 0.003 mole fracs. So if I think in terms of knobs I can turn, so we're going to assume at this point that the only knob I can turn is I have some valve that I can use to control the inlet solvent flow rate. Right? And so I know that if I increase the solvent flow rate, the amount of acetone should decrease. Just like if I were to decrease the flow rate of my inlet gas, the outlet concentration of acetone should also decrease. Right? It's the same as increasing the inlet solvent flow rate. And I could also mess with um, changing the number of stages and pressure just like we did did last time. Okay. But here, I'm just going to think about changing the inlet solvent flow rate just so I could introduce what a sensitivity analysis is and then um, how to use a controller to solve for uh, the flow rate to hit that target specification. So first, the sensitivity analysis. So you know, after I've constructed my um, flow sheet, okay, and when I first come in or load up ChemCAD, right, I'm on my home tab. So how I'm going to get to my sensitivity analysis is I need to go over to this analysis tab. Okay, so under analysis, over to the far left, okay, it's labeled sensitivity here. All right, this is where I set up and I run my sensitivity study. Okay, so this drop down menu is blank. I don't currently have any sensitivity analyses uh, yet for my flow sheet. And so I'm going to create one, and I'm going to create one with this button right over to the left, Create New Sensitivity Analysis. Okay. Now, first thing I need to do is I need to give it a name. So this name is for my reference. So if I have 50 different sensitivity analyses you know, for my large flow sheet, right, I can identify it by name and know exactly what it is. Okay, so I'm going to call this, say, Water Flow, right? because what I want to vary is the uh, inlet solvent flow rate or, or the flow rate of water. All right, maybe we'll call it water flow in. Okay, bam. Okay, all right. So now my pop-up window appears, okay. and on this first tab, right, this first tab called adjusting, is I need to specify, you know, what what knob am I trying to turn? What variable am I trying to turn? Now I have the option if I could change two variables at a time. Okay, but in this class, right, at least initially, I'm only going to worry about or look at the case of turning one knob. Uh, at a time, so we don't need to think about two and, and how those variables are going to change in relation to each other. Okay, so in terms of this variable, I'm going to change. Okay, I have two radio buttons, equipment or stream. Equipment would be if I want to change a variable for that unit op. So if I want to look at the effect of, say, changing the number of stages or changing a feed tray, okay, those would be equipment specifications. Right, and I'm going to cancel out of this just so you can see what I mean. When I pop open my column, okay, remember variables that I need to specify, right? These are the green ones. Okay, optional variables are, you know, here in black. Okay, so when I think about talk or reference a variable or parameter I'm going to change for that piece of equipment or the unit op, it'd be, say, changing the top pressure, right? Instead of 1.03, maybe I want to look at the effect of, of decreasing it. Okay. Now, when it comes to changing parameters of the stream, right? double clicked on the stream right this is what I'm thinking of and so remember up here for stream specification right I could specify two of temperature pressure or vapor fraction the ones I specified are in green uh, and so in this case I could change temperature or pressure say of stream one 
um, or I could change uh, composition. All right, but that's what I'm looking at uh, in terms of what I can change. Okay. All right, so to get back in, so water flow is still selected here. I'm going to click on the cog wheel, which is edit. Right? And so that's just I wanted to, wanted to look at things. And so what I want to play with is I want to look at changing the flow rate of water. Okay, so it's not a parameter I'm going to change for my piece of equipment, but it's going to be a stream parameter. Okay, so I click stream, and what stream is, well, ID is referring to the ID number. So I want to change a parameter for stream one. Okay, cool. What do I want to change? So now when I click on my drop down, I get a whole host of, of everything. And my inlet stream is just pure water, so I'm just going to click on to change my total mole rate. Okay, but if I want to just specify, you know, just pure water, right? Where I could do that as well. Okay, but I'm going to click total mole rate. So then I don't need to select a component. All right, if I was doing flow rate of water from the drop down menu for component mole rate, I would then also need to select water. Okay, but I'm just going to change the total mole rate. And then next, I have variable units. So what are the units for my flow rate? Well, it's, hey, mole rate, okay? Um, now, I, I will add, this is a common place to make mistakes, is choosing the wrong temperature can, or wrong units can sometimes have pretty odd uh, effects, okay? And we can play with that once we get it working. Okay, so stream one, I'm going to change the total mole rate, okay, which has units of mole rate. Variable name, so this is just giving it a name so that when I generate a re report, because essentially what the sensitivity study is going to do is it's going to perform a, a series of calculations and record some variable, you know, for some value of, so I'm going to change some independent variable and measure some dependent variable. And so I want to give that independent variable some human name. Okay. So I'm going to call it water flow in. All right, so it's my inlet water flow rate. And then what do I want to vary it from? Well, we were 200 kilomoles per hour before, and my exit acetone concentration was 1.425 mole percent. So um, I know that I'm going to need to increase the flow rate of water to bring that concentration down. Okay. And so here I'm going to specify a range of concentrations or range of flow rates to perform calculations over. Okay. So I'm going to write 200 to 500, and then We'll do say, hey, 100 equal steps. Okay, so what this is going to do is it'll first perform a calculation at 200, and then it'll perform 100 additional calculations, right, increasing the flow rate until I get to a flow rate of 500. Okay, so it'll perform 101 calculations. All right, so it'll start with 200, then increase the flow rate, and keep increasing it all the way up to 500, performing a, or running my simulation for each of those uh, flows. Okay. All right. And, you know, in general, you could make this low if you think the calculation is going to take a while. Um, this one should be pretty fast, right? When I ran it, it says it takes zero seconds, so it should be pretty quick. Okay. And then what do I want to record? So in my recording tabs, so each tab I can list up to three variables I want to track, and there's four tabs, right? So I can record up to 12 variables at a time. And so you could think of this as, you know, this is my variable I'm, I'm changing, I'm turning. This is my um, independent variable. And then I think about my dependent variables, what I want to record, right, as a function of, of that variable I'm changing. Okay. And what do I want to record, right? And so what I want to look at is the mole frac of acetone in this exiting stream, stream three, is I'm looking for you know, the amount of water, the flow rate of water required to knock that down to 0.3 mole percent. Okay. So what I want to record is I want to look at stream three. Now, variable, okay, so I can't get mole percent, but I can get a mole frac. And so it's going to come here under, there's total mole rate, total mass rate, and then we have our components. And so I'm going to do component mole fraction. Okay. And now I need to select the component. I want to look at acetone. Okay. And, you know, what are the units? Well, mole frac is, it's dimensionless. So in terms of variable units, right, it's just dimensionless. Again, we can look at, you know, what happens when I click something else. Okay, but it's not not mole rate. It's not a rate. Um, I think moles are even in there, right? So, you know, if I have a batch process, you know, I could get, you know, have some number of moles at a given time. Okay, but it's mole frac. It's, it's dimensionless. And what do I want to name this variable? 
So let's call it, say, acetone out or, or something of that nature. Okay. okay, cool. Right, and I could add as many variables as I want, um, but I'm just going to keep it as just acetone for now. All right, and I'll click OK. Now, I only have one unit um, within my simulation. So just want to draw a comparison here. If I, if I come over to Home, remember if I click Run All, Run All is going to perform my mass and energy balances for my entire flow sheet. So if I have 50 unit ops on there, all right, it's going to perform mass and energy balances over all 50 unit ops. Okay. If I just want to perform the calculation for that column, right, if I click on it, then I click Run Selected, and it'll just perform calculations for that one unit. Right? And, and oftentimes, as we set up a large flow sheet, we'll solve our flow sheet sequentially, where we'll get one piece of unit op working, run it, get it working, then run the next, and so on and so forth. Right? Remember, ChemCAD's numerically solving these, and so the, the better the estimates that we could give it, right, and to the, the more likely it is to, to converge. And if I just try and you know solve you know all 50 unit ops at once, right, it becomes a more complicated problem to solve. All right, so so that was you know my home tab in, in run. Okay, when I come over to analysis, right, this is different, right. So now under sensitivity, I've got water flow in. Okay, and it's going to be the same thing, right. So this is going to be such that here I'm going to run my sensitivity analysis. Okay, and the buttons are are going to be the same, right. So this is I have a flow sheet with 50 unit ops. When I perform the sensitivity study, so as I change the flow rate of water, I'm going to solve my mass and energy balances for all 50 unit ops. Okay. Okay. Where run selected is, I'm just going to perform the calculation for one unit op. If I have a highlighted, that's what it is by default. If I don't have anything highlighted, then I need to indicate it. What's going to happen in my sensitivity study again is I'm going to look at, I'm going to vary the flow rate from 200 to 500 kilomoles per hour. Right, for each iteration, I'm going to solve my mass and energy balances. So if I have 50 unit ops, right, and maybe I can, you know, this the performance of my uh, stripping or absorbing column is independent of everything else, well, then it might be completely unnecessary to, you know, do a run all to, to solve my mass and energy balance for everything. Okay, and it might be better just to have it on this one. Okay, so, so anyway, so these are the same, but now we're talking about running our sensitivity analysis which is going to be running a bunch of calculations sequentially. Okay, so if I do run selected, okay, you'll see it's running 101 iterations. It took a whopping two seconds. So now to look at the results. Okay, so I'm going to click on plot results. Okay, so here's my sensitivity analysis, right? Water flow in is what it gives it by the, it gives it its name by default. Okay, my X variable, right? I call that water flow in. Okay. Actually, I, I call that these all the same. I should have changed it up. But water flow in, okay, that's the name of the variable that I'm I'm changing. That's my water flow rate from 200 to 500 kilomoles per hour. And then when I plot, right, I can you know choose what I want my um, dependent variable to be. So here's could be acetone out. That's my acetone mole frac. Okay. So when I click OK, right, I get a plot. So remember we started at 1.425 mole percent. And then it decreased as my flow rate of water increased. Right, and it looks like, so I'm looking for 0 0.03 mole fracs. Right, 0 0.03 mole fracs. Well, 0 0.04, right, is somewhere up here. Around 422, right at 500, I'm at like 0 0.002. Right, so it's going to be somewhere between, uh, actually, it's going to be somewhere between yeah, like 430 and, and 500, right? So somewhere between, say, 430 and 500 is where I would hit my flow rate, okay? So that's my sensitivity study, okay? And, and just my aside on units. So if I were to edit this, and let's maybe, yeah, let's do my, my adjusting variable, right? Total mole rate. What if instead of calling it or giving it variable units of mole rate, what if I call it temperature, right? And click OK. Okay, let's see. So then if I run it, And I plot the results. Right, I, I I get I get something, but it's you know I it, it it you know it's this is supposed to be. And actually, hold on, I flipped them when I plotted it. Uh, come on, let's plot the results again. 
yeah, it should be water flow. Yeah. So, so the issue is, so here's my acetomol frac. So my water flow rate, okay, this looks just like before. It's going from 200 to 500, but it's labeling it now as, as a temperature in degree C. And then it also looks like, right, I'm looking for 0 0.003, which happens up here at like 290 degree C, right? And so it, it's really confusing what all this is, right? It, it, it yeah, so right, it, it's odd in that it runs, it gives you an answer, but it's not really clear what it is, right? And so a common mistake when setting up these sensitivity studies is with the units. Um, you can mess up what your, you know, what the units are, or, and you know the the challenge is is ChemCat will still run and give you a value, but it it doesn't make very much sense. Okay, now besides the plot. We also get tabulated data, so we get the water flow rate, and then there's the variable we're tracking, okay? And so that's all all great, okay? And so it's just sequentially performing a series of calculations, um, so it's a little more efficient than, say, just repetitively running your calculation and tracking some results. Here I tracked one variable, right? You could track, um, track others as well. So that's 